Hey, everybody. Welcome and thank you for joining me today for today's Habitat Zoom. We will be going over the upcoming Masterworks auction that will be taking place in uh, a few like a, like a few weeks, leaving less than that on January and February 24th down in Sarasota, Florida. It is a selection of 52 works and they're quite a variety, lots of color, a lot of spectacular historic pieces. So I advise you to scroll through it. And, uh, you know, if you want to see more photos, we can take more down there when we're down there in Florida because they're all packed up. They're actually being transported to our pop-up space in Sarasota, mm -hmm. which I'll cover in this little presentation here. So let me share my robot screen right here and uh, get rolling. So here is our logo. Here we go. So um, after this, this slideshow, I'll kind of go over the ways of bidding because there's multiple platforms that allow people to bid on along with silent bidding with me, and they all have different buyer's premiums. I know it's technical, but you'll get the best advice. And I'm going to paste a link um, in a second in the chat of the actual talk, of, that, of the actual catalog you can download, which makes it a lot easier to go over the, um, you know, the auction at your convenience and look at all the pieces. Let me just pop that in there before I forget entirely. All right, great. So uh, people have asked, uh, people have stopped, but they still do every now and then ask about these uh, virtual presentations. They're on our website under the little hamburger there. Click the virtual presentation button. They're usually there if I can remember to put them there right after I send the email out, but you can always sh shoot me an email or check there. So the Glass Coast Weekend is starting up. We it, Everything's going better than planned. Like we have the Ringling Demo Studio open for Davide Salvadore. We have a reception planned with the Ringling Museum of Art, the Imagine Museum Gala, the four exhibitions, the auction, the talk by Wilfred Group, it's going to be an spectacular time. And all your friends are going to be there. Everybody you know from the glass world and beyond. Um, and we're getting more SVPs every day. One of the more recent ones we received was Sybil Peretti will be down there. I mean, this is what, 30 people? Mind my checklist that goes to 15 twice, but 30 artists will be down there waiting to meet you and say hi. So it's a spectacular time. If you're planning on coming, please join us. If you're down there in Florida, come see us. We also discovered that the Ringling College has an art crawl going on on the 24th at night between 5 and 8 o'clock. So there'll be like food trucks and demonstrations and music. So there's all kinds of things going on at that in, in the area at the time. So here's a glimpse at the exhibitions that are happening. I'm going to mute everybody because I'm hearing a little feedback. So don't mind, don't mind me clicking on the screen real quick. Um, the Pioneer Show that was curated by Ferdinand Hampson. The Legend Show, which was also curated by Habitat's founder. Gravity Bound Art and uh, Between Worlds. And we have some extra pieces that we're bringing along for people to come and enjoy and see. So it's going to be spectacular. Um, it's at the Ringling College Studio A soundstage. We were there last year. So make sure you're over there. Enough of that. Glass Coast Weekend. We have a solo show of Mark Laputa coming up in March. We'll have some of his work down there. Not Grandma's Glass continues every single, uh, every single month. I'm looking forward to upcoming month in March. We'll talk about another artist who's in the NGG presentation. The glass tours, which happen in, I think, July, there may be room. I don't know anymore. Just keep leaving the slide in. So if you ha haven't tried to check out the tours, contact me. I'll put you in touch with the right people. They're traveling to Europe. We're traveling to Europe, not me, but Ferdinand Hampson and Kathy Hampson, my parents, with a bunch of people going from uh, studio to studio. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. So we're getting close now to our international, and we're putting all our plans together. And we're hosting the very first ever artist gala on june 4th which is a sunday night so to kick off the entire glass week with the international the Ga glass Ar the glass art society as well as mission glass project there's an art studio that's actually opening up across the street from our gallery uh, it's called the axiom art studio and we'll be able to take advantage of that location and show glass blowing i couldn't have planned it better if i actually paid for it myself so i'm ecstatic about that so plan for june to be in detroit because it's the place to be all right, on with the auction. So the auction's online in multiple platforms. We have it on Live Auctioneers, our own auction platform, and you can check out you can check out by bidding with me. So we'll talk more about that. So let's kick in. Here's some more auction stuff. I'll just kind of go through this kind of intro stuff, and we'll go into the first piece, which is um, Dale Chihuly. So what's interesting about this piece, and it has a bid already online, is when you hire a photographer to shoot the pieces, he doesn't always know what the piece looks like. And so this piece was shot. And then as we were packing up the piece to take to Florida, there were two more pieces for this piece that were not in the shot. So there's two small objects that are uh, red blown forms that actually sit in the smaller clamshells. So we're going to take an informal shot when we're down there. So the piece has expanded without going up in price. So that's kind of exciting. Uh, 
this is kind of fun. This is someone I've never really heard of, of Frank Van Den Ham. Sometimes collections come in from collectors and there's new artists, usually European artists that I'm not super aware of. But this piece was beautiful in color and has multiple forms. And I understand that this piece was made in a style that shows that the world's not perfect, but it is pretty beautiful and pretty stunning in tone and color. An older work from, not too older from the 90s, but just something I've never seen before. And it's fun to incorporate this in the auction because then I'm get, I get a chance to learn as well. Yeah, Leah Wingfield's African series is her most sought after collection of work. And we've had a few of these at auction and they have sold uh, sold pretty, usually they're early in the auction, they sell pretty well. We still have one available in our collection from a body we did back in, I think, 2010 or nine. But this work is just stunning. I mean, you can see we had it shot twice because another fun photographer time, he didn't have the reins on the front of the camel. So the right piece is the complete installation while the left one's missing some of the reins on the face. But uh, this was her, she's of multiple bodies of work based upon her status in the world. I know she lost her sister and that was a body of work. And she has other series and she's fe featured in Ferd's, Ferdinand Hampton's book, the, the 50 year journey telling about her story up until 2012. But this work is definitely in that book. And this is a beautiful piece. Dante Marioni, many of you know him. He's an amazing tactician with the materials and working for a long time uh, with glass. And this is kind of a fun, fun piece. When I first saw this, I thought it was Nancy Kalen. And I had to do a double take to realize that it was Dante working in his cane patterns, making this fun acorn. It's actually quite big, nine by 13. This is kind of a piece you can find a place for anywhere, but it is a, it is a wonderful work by the artist. And some people, usually we sell the taller vessel form. So it's nice to have a variety style in our, in our, in our, in our gallery. So Ferd gave me some uh, pointers to talk about because he couldn't be here today. And he talked about Martin Blank. Um, he mentioned that this is a beautiful and graceful form even before you focus on the figure. The sculpture is created on the end of a blowpipe and it, it's a tribute to Martin's ability to, to sculpt with hot glass. Uh, Martin's well known. He did fluent steps outside the Tacona Museum. He has a piece outside of the One World Trade Center. He We work with him constantly, doing commissions with him. And he's always in demand. This is one of his most in-demand forms. He does the lotuses as well and the big pedal pedal works. But I really enjoy, if you like more figurative things, there's no, no better piece than this. He's just an, an incredible talent. And, uh, you know, we're, we're he's part of our longtime Habitat family. Everybody knows John Kuhn. We have two pieces of John's in the auction. This is the more familiar style. Most of you can see the taller form with the million pieces that are cold and cold worked and laminated together, creating his objects. It's 19 inches tall, so it's quite substantial by John. And he obviously is still working today. I see a lot of his stuff on social media, but this is a great opportunity to get a, a, a historic piece by John. And you'll see a piece later on in the auction of a older style work. So we have two sets of Paul Stankard's work in this auction. They're both from the Michael and Annie Belkin collection who are huge collectors of art, especially Paul's, based out of Ohio. And if you've ever been into our vault and you've seen our collection of Paul Stankards, your socks have flown off your feet and they have landed outside the building because they had a tremendous collection. We don't advertise it too much because we, we love Paul Stankard. We want people to come and cherry pick. But for this auction, we picked three. These are about three and a half inches wide. Older works, probably from the 90s, but just stunning. And sometimes... His work can be uh, full of flowers and bees and you can't see through the work. But we selected these three because they kind of come from the same body and style, but completely different. And every single flower he creates is actually usually a real flower. And then he has hidden things like bees and berries and root people in his work. But this is priced really well and will probably sell without issue. Uh, Masayo Otahashi, a Japanese artist that we've worked with for years. She makes these female form figures and we've done commissions with her as well. Very peaceful work. We had a question about this piece early on in the auction, if the face, these little lines on the face were actually part of the process. And we emailed uh, Masayo to ask her and she said, yes, it's part of the process. The paint has some qualities where it ends up leaving some cracks and the material itself has casting lines. So this is absolutely perfect in the way it's supposed to be according to the artist, just a beautiful piece. And you can see on the bottom, there's like a little thimble or house representing, you know, the home and the motherhood that every woman and parent deals with. And it's just overall stunning. I love this piece. Scott Chasing is an Australian artist. We've had a couple of his works in his last auction. Usually they're 
you know, pretty literal, but you kind of ha- leave it up to interpretation. Unfortunately, every time we get one, we don't know the title of them. Um, so there might be some kind of title you can help us come up with. But just overall fun, colorful glass by an artist that's well-known in the community. Got a couple of Valines in this, uh, this auction, and two of them are similar to this style, like maps. But they're both stunning. The other one's purple. This one is blue. And this was more of a simple form. And at 14 by 15, it's not the huge map size that we sometimes have. And I just love the different tones of the blue mixing with the gold for the face. It's just very, very nice. And you'll see in a second, we have a long, rare tower piece um, that I've never seen before coming up by the same artist that I think is just incredible. Jenny and Sabrina, um, it's a very, Fern Road's a very pof- powerful sculpture, sculpture of substantial scale. It has all the elements to make her work, make of their work mysterial, mysterious and unique. And what I love about this particular work is look at the detail on the face. Look at the lines and look at how much effort was put into the wrap and the beautiful like tree-like topper. And it comes separate from the actual sphere. And we actually emailed uh, Jenny and Sabrina to make sure we had the placement right for the sphere because I thought it was a little high in the original photo. I would definitely love to have this work in my house. And I think like... When I see a lot of the artists' work, I see like staples, like what really represents them really well. And this body of work does. And this is, um, we'll have some other work down at Glass Coast Weekend, but this is the only mask we're going to have. So if you like it, bid today. Now, here's a rare hour opportunity, something I don't see very often. It's seven urns, I believe it's seven, all stacked together um, by William Morris. Something super unique. Usually you see these hanging on sticks in the artifact series. But these all lay on a nice, looks like a, a base of some sort. But man, it is a beautiful piece. I'm guessing the 25 inches is the size of the base from back to front. But these could be re- re- rearranged based on your space. But it's like getting multiple pieces by William Morris for the price of one. And I think this one's going to have a lot of attention. Uh, Edels and Elliot, if you've been on some of our some of the uh, ACG Zooms, they visited them in Australia. They're a new artist for us, but we've offered them at auction a couple of times, and they have a nice variety of, of work. Usually all of it's blown, but usually it's in demand. The costs are pretty efficient, and, and for people who want to bid on these type things, it's a good opener for getting glass in your art collection. And this beautiful red is just stunning when it's blasted with light, so maybe you have a space in your house near a window that would be the perfect place. Carbler and David's are collaborators that have been working for years. And usually they have vessel forms with glass that's been cut away. And we've had at least, you know, maybe like 12 of their pieces at the auction in the past. This is the first I've ever seen like this, where it has a solid piece of glass with granite underneath it in a totally different style. And it's 20 inches wide, so it is quite beautiful. And this is another one that would be a great opener for collections because the price won't get won't won't reach too high at, at auction, I guarantee it. But it is a beauty. And, you know, it's fun to collect some of these these artists that are known but not super well-known because they're, you're able to get in a better price point and have something done by professionals in, in the glass art world. Now, take me, take, come with me to space as we travel to the artwork of Rick Allen. We have two incredible works by Rick, both of them inspired by space. I was just talking to him recently about his huge installation. If you've been following him on social media, he just made this, like, giant octopus monster with the help of his wife, wife, Shelly Allen. That's like, I don't know, 30 feet high. And I asked him if he finished it. He's like, no, they're still working on it. But it's been taking up all his time doing one giant commission. So we haven't seen much new from him. But this is an opportunity to get work by him. And this is some some beautiful work that's very, very literal. But if you're a fan of space and science, these two pieces are for you. It's glass, that a figure's glass with a metal stand holding it up in the air. And this is one, you know, that everybody could love if they have an affection for the unknown. And then you also, this is a huge, huge work, 44 inches tall by Rick as well, exploring space and time, Um, free, it's a freestanding piece, could, you could put a plinth underneath it or put it somewhere high in your house, but it is, it is a fun exploration of of what he loves, traveling through the universe, can only imagine what his studio is like, and if you ever, if you ever seen a video of of Rick, he has a, he has his own space suit he made out of glass and he can climb inside of, it must weigh a ton, but he's like six foot eight, so he can handle it. Definitely check that one out. So here is the other Birds of Lean I've never quite seen. A pendulum pod at 91 inches tall. It kind of looks like his boat works that hang on the wall, but it's different. And it's mounted above 
the piece, so it must have some kind of slit in the back to hold the entire piece up, or it mounts to the piece of glass in the middle of it. We went down to Florida to pick up a glass collection and brought this piece back. But it's something totally different that I've never really seen. He has his Watcher series that you've seen as well with the, the, the tall blue, usually figured, figure type, figurative type work. But something totally unique offered at this auction. If you are looking for a Valine that's definitely different, this is for you. And then we get to Lebinsky. So this piece was owned by Jack and the Beaver Robinson. And most of their collection is, is owned by the Detroit Institute of Arts. And after they passed away, we picked up their collection and brought it back to our gallery, which we held on for two years for them to get organized for selling. And now we're authorized to sell. And we've been offering some of the work in the last couple of auctions, but this is the first Lubinsky we've offered of this particular type. I've never quite seen one before. Um, I don't know the name of it. I'm sure I can do some more research and we'll figure it out. But this was in their upstairs um, living room or bedroom for years. And it is just a, uh, a monumental piece of unique work by the Lubinsky and Braktova. So museums, this is a piece for you. We have a couple pieces by Susan Taylor Glasgow. We had a, a, a piece in our last auction of this apron series. And this one's called Pocket. They're very fun feminine plays on women's roles. Um, and we also represent her in the primary gallery as well. Um, these can lay flat or we're trying to figure out how to wall mount them. But they're very, very, they're very, very fun and whimsical works. And I'm a big fan of Susan and what she creates. You'll see some more from her upcoming uh, Giles Bettison, an Australian artist that actually lived in the U.S. for a while and has moved back to Australia. This is 12.5 inches tall. And usually his pieces are um, flatter, you know, kind of like uh, rectangular vessels. I've seen a couple cylindrical in my day, but this one is just overall beautiful because it has so many different Marini styles in it. As you see the glass spin around, uh, you can imagine it spinning around in front of you, but it is a beautiful work by, by the artist. So Joe Philip Myers, here we go, Ferd again. One of the most beautiful Joe Philip Myers vessels inspired by winter. No, notice the subtle detail that magnify throughout the piece. One cityscape of the lightest, of the largest created in the series. So it is pretty large. It's 29 inches tall. And I always keep telling people that Joe Philip Myers is a very important part of the glass studio movement. And his work is priced always under the money. I would collect all of it and just store it because... His work is just so so incredible and has so many beautiful techniques used. And uh, he's still alive today. And I saw him talk at a gas conference a few, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe like 10 years ago now. But a wonderful piece by the artist and very please, ple pleasing to the eye. Uh, Laura De Santa, another one from Ferd. Her work is always subtle but compelling. She was the granddaughter of Vanini, the great Italian glass house. Oh, did I get that right? 22, 22. Yep. Uh, Laura did pass away somewhat recently and we have this beautiful work it is very very thin it's only three inches di deep but man it has some beautiful color to it and we've done well at, with her work in the past auction so if you don't have a work by laura this would be a great opportunity and we get to one of the uh historic people in the contemporary glass art world harvey littleton this is a 17 inch freestanding form by harvey which is kind of unique because it's seven inches wide and six inches thick from in the base. I've never quite seen a tree trunk like this one with such thickness to it. Usually they're long and have a thinness to it and elegance, but he must have had some fun with this piece, making it very, very thick. And uh, I think this is something definitely unique to this auction and unique to its offering because I've never quite seen one like it. And man, it is beautiful. Another piece by Paul Stankard. This is a large museum quality piece containing uh, a floating golden orb and, a, and a, a root person face and some botanicals. Uh, we This is from the same collection that before the Michael and Annie Belkin collection. Just an incredible piece uh, at a museum quality scale. So once you get past the smaller uh, 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 paperweights in the collection, you want something more substantial. Or if you're looking, if you're a museum looking to collect an important part piece by the artist, they're getting harder and harder to find. This would definitely be it. You take a quite little sip here to coat the throat. In the past few auctions, we've had work by Colin Heaney. They're very, very colorful and fun. I love the colors and tones of this piece, and it has that smooth egg-like appearance. Another one that will go for a reasonable amount of money, but it's quite substantial at 15 and a half by 15 and a half inches. If you have a place for this piece, I would definitely bid. 
Uh, Robert Carlson, someone we don't have in our auctions too often. We actually auctioned this piece off in the past, a while ago. And the person that owned it is moving and is now selling it. And there's a whole story about this particular, I think it's the Hestophysis is the god of craft. And it's showing uh, a narrative all over the front and back of this piece. It's just It's just a wonderful piece with gold foil or gold paint. Very literal, but magical nonetheless. So check it out on uh, at the auction. What number are we at? They're 26 now. Okay, we're flying through these. We're going to Rick Beck. Many of you are familiar with Rick. He has recently moved to Hawaii to continue his working career. It must be incredible to do that. I'm going to go visit him. You're welcome to come with me. And we have two works by Rick in this auction. A, a, a pull toy, a very fun piece. It's a little bit big though, at 26 inches, so it's not so much a toy celebrating femininity and he's done tools and objects and explored nature but i'm a big fan of rick's and and this body of work here's another one a reclining peach figure you can see the human human style to the piece beautiful base to it this is a piece you would put someplace you have along with you a table or a, uh something under a mirror against the wall but man rick is so amazingly talented a master of the material uh, Alexis Silk, this is uh, a wonderful work by the artist who currently resides in Italy. We've sold her work on the primary market. This is one of the first times we're offering it uh, in person at auction. And it'll be on display in Sarasota for the auction. The torso is made at the end of blown pipe. It is an incredible feat because usually glass weighs a ton. And it's hooked up on this, on this base. Some people have incorporated lights inside of the structures. I don't think this one has the lights, but she is... A very talented artist creating very beautiful work. Many of you know David Bennett. He is he was a lawyer who became obsessed with glass and retired. Went to Italy, started learning with Lino. He's a great narrative, and uh, started creating horses and later later creating acrobats. And sometimes you can find a single head. Sometimes he has multiple heads in the spot in this body of work. But um, I'm a big fan of these amber mares or the horse heads because it shows off his talent and where he was that particular time. You don't see them very often. They come up, but not so often. So think about that piece. Okay, we're at the other John Kuhn. So traveling back in time into the late 80s, as Kuhn was trying to find his um, his his path, I guess, he was dabbling in these oxide-exposed glass pieces that would change the chemicals of the actual glass, being the mad scientist he was. And these are very historic pieces. Again, they're not super expensive, so keep your eye on it for location. But they're great narrative, and they're you can always tell when someone knows what they're talking about in glass because they get to see one of these and like, oh yeah, it's John Kuhn. And we actually sold one out of our vault recently to somebody who knew the body of work. We had a green piece, somewhat similar to this one. Um, so there is a demand for this body of work. Uh, Richard Jolly, um, many of you know him as well. He's a huge installation of the Knoxville, Knoxville Museum of Art. These are his line drawings. They're very popular, very peaceful pieces. We've sold these before. We just sold a, a head in our last auction. There was a male. Now we have a female. Staple work from the from the time period of the 80s by him and uh, just overall great pieces. So Mary Van Klein lectured me and how these works are made, which is always fun. She she made an email describing this as some kind of specialized Kodak glass that no longer exists, that she took her photography from her youth and transferred images to. Mary's, Mary's a trip, but she creates such wonderful, peaceful pieces. And this piece could fit in anybody's den or in a living space, exploring a world outside your own in the vessel form. So I'm a big fan of Mary's, and I think this work represents a perfect example of the era she was working on these, these uh, Kodak photo transfers or however you want to describe them, but they're great. Michael Pavlik. I have a lot of clients who are actually looking for Michael Pavlik's work. They are big fans of him and he's still alive. I heard and Corey told me recently he's, he lives in Mexico, which is, which is wild to hear. And um, we show his ex-wife, Vladimir Klumpar, who's an amazing part of our family. And now their son, who's second generation, Matthias Pavlik, both of them will have work at the Imagine Museum and in our exhibition space at Glass Coast Weekend. So it's great to show the other part of the family in the auction. Very geometric work of the time. This is the kind of work when I went to the gallery as a kid, I would see a, a lot of places because a lot of artists were doing this geometric kind of stuff. And this is a great example of Michael Pavlik's work uh, from the era in the 90s. And it's just beautiful. And so I'm hoping there's going to be some bidding war on this guy. Thurman, um, 
one of the most talented artists working today with the mixed media in glass and paint. We're going to be seeing his exhibition down in Sarasota as the very first early bird event. They have a, a gallery at the Ringling College that actually has an exhibition of his up. So I'm eager to go see it. I've been seeing people on Facebook like Jane Buckman and other people visiting this display. So I'm looking forward to it. But you could own your own Thurman Statum from the late 80s when he was getting his mojo going and, and really exploring color. And this is a beautiful work in his most well-known series, The Ladders. He's done bigger pieces later, incorporated more different platforms and whatnot. But I really love this work because it's just a simple ladder form and covers his, his body uh, so well. Now, kicking into the geometric forms again, we have Michael Taylor, who will be at the show um, with some new work. But we have one historic piece from his Kanzwana series. We've had a lot of attention on this body of work already with people asking questions and availability and where they can see it. It'll be down at the Glass Coast Weekend on display from another private collection. Uh, 21 inches wide, very geometric, lots and lots of color, a beautiful, beautiful work. And people have been sharing with me their Kwanzaa series pieces, because this is piece number 31. I'm not sure how many there are. I'm sure I'll ask him when I'm down there. But a uh, uh, wonderful work by Michael. Liz Sterling gave a talk not too long ago with AACG, and we've been selling her work consistently at auction you know, for the past few years. Fun narratives, lots of etching in her sculptures. I, if you watch the tour of her home, she has work all over her home in this same kind of style. But at 60 inches tall, this is probably one of the larger ones we've had to offer. It is a beautiful work. It looks like they're all women, so celebrating femininity in some some way, and it's called Lighting the Way. I love I love her work. Here's the other body of work by Paul Stanker, the three other pieces, this time all blue. And uh, again, simpler designs from the eras, and there's a whole description of each one of these on the auction site, and that one incorporates a bee in the middle, which is kind of in demand, and this might have a root person as well. Very, very fun and... Um, you know, impressive work from the era by the best paperweight, paperweight maker in the world. Ross Richmond, I love Ross's work. He's such a talented artist, and he's not only good um, in his own work, he helps out so many others. When I was in Seattle, he was helping Preston Singletary install pieces. He's such a great part of the Seattle community, and I'm so glad he's still working today. And this is his humanoid-type series, but we've had these in the gallery, and usually they're like 18 inches, you know, maybe maybe 15 inches. This one's the biggest one I've ever seen at 22 inches tall. So this is a great opportunity to get one of the most substantial ones by the artist for sure. Peter Hora, we're planning an exhibition of Peter's uh, probably in April of this year of, of his work in the gallery and some work from his studio. But this work is also from the Jack and Aviva Robinson collection, who I was talking about, who has the rest of their collection of DAA. This was in their living room facing out the window or facing in the window. It was just beautiful to look at with the beautiful blue pulsing through the piece. You need a lot of light uh, on the edge, but in the center part where it gets thinner, where it gets light in the center, it starts to really pop. But it is an, an incredible, another staple by the artist, by Peter Hora, who is one of our longest time family members here at the gallery. A lot of you know Laura Donifer. She has slowed down um, creating because she's been traveling with her mother across the country, spending time with her. And wow, we have a masterpiece of hers in this auction. She will be down there for our Glass Coast weekend too, so I'm looking forward to seeing her. But at 14 inches tall, 14 inches wide, this is a great example of Laura Donifer's work, which is almost unattain unattainable right now because of she's not making much anymore. So this would be the piece for you if you're looking for a Laura Donifer because it is, it is a wonderful piece. Uh, Nicholas Africano, we did a talk with during our Habitat Zooms during the pandemic, and it was great to have a, uh, a glimpse into his world. So we've had some questions about this piece. If the actual dress is cloth or glass, and the dress is actually cloth pl placed on the glass figure. And every piece he creates is an homage, uh, image of his wife, uh, Rebecca Africano. And she's actually a twin. So every time, every now and then you'll see like two figures uh, next to each other, exploring the, the idea of identity and who's who, and but still being so closely related. This individual piece was made in 2004 and is just beautiful and it's priced really well. So check it out. Another piece by Thurman Statham. I think Ferd wrote about this one. Um, <clears throat> this idea is everything in life is a gamble and is, it is one of uh, uh, Thurman's themes. Um, this wall sculpture is is quite literally with random cards placed and clear glass creating great texture and image. So, you know, he uses a lot of found objects in his work. You'll see that these cards are not the 
perfect. They've been used. They have life to them. Now they're incorporated in his sculpture. This is a wall-mounted piece at 12 and a half by 12 and a half and a great opener into collecting Thurman's work and collecting glass for sure. Now it's this piece. Everybody knows this piece. We put this piece at auction probably like six times already. It's this Glancy piece. It is an incredible work. So we're trying to bring the price down to where it could sell because Glancy has amazing pieces out there. And this particular vessel form is beautiful, but it's sometimes in the shadow of so many others. So if you're looking for an opener in the, the Glancy's work, this is definitely one we should definitely look at. Um, but like I said, it needs a home. So if you need a if you're looking for an impressive bowl by the historic artist who passed away a couple of years ago, uh, this is a great piece. Now back to the fun work of Susan Tether Glasgow. Um, this is called Re Rapunzel, Rapunzel's Response. And it's, you know, like one of those plays on a story that now Rapunzel's now in control of. And it looks like she just decided to go ahead and cut her hair and live her own life and not have to worry about the, the story of others. And it's kind of a big piece. It's 26 tall by 19 deep or 19 wide by 17 deep. And all these fun uh, scissors hang out in front of the piece. This is kind of a, a piece that people would be talking about when they see this particular work. And it is beautiful. So it'll be live and in person down in Florida. What are we at now? We're on. Oh, Judith Escola. Um, the Seattle-based artist, Judith, uh, has some incredible talent. She took a sabbatical and traveled for a while. And I heard she's back in her studio as of recently. His works are are so much fun to see the real blown object in the front and silhouettes made in the back. And it is just something that you, a lot of people have in their collection. A lot of people have Julia Skull's work, but if you don't have it, this would be a great piece to own. Um, David Hutchhausen, 47. David, who's been working with Glass for a long time, he's been probably at every single one of our internationals since day one, uh, explores the form. And you can see the bottom of it has these large chunks, like kind of looks like it's almost purpose, pur purposely chipped out of it, but everything he does is so meticulous and it adds to the, the visuals as you walk around the piece. And the color on top just blasts through the entire piece. And we've done really well with David's work over the over over his career. And as of late, he's been quite hot. So an opportunity to buy one at auction at the 10 inch scale is a, is a great opportunity. Bill, Bill Carlson, Ferd had a comment about this one. He started mixing materials very early in his career um, this iconic sculpture is a mix of cast and laminated glass, and he uses safety glass. And we've done well with this body of work because it's another staple. You know, if you think of William Carlson's work, you're thinking of this Pragnas series. And over time, from my experience, what happens with this particular body of work is they get put together incorrectly and they, they need repair. And this piece has not been um, repaired. And it's also put together often. It's been to get together once. We took it apart. We brought it home, put it back together for the photo. But we know what we're doing. In the future, we'll be putting tape on it so that whoever buys it knows how to set it up. But look at those beautiful tones and colors. This is such a great piece by the artist. Erwin Eich, another historic artist. He was one of the pioneers. He's going to be one of the pioneers in our show in uh, Sarasota. And, you know, his work is all about ideas and energy and looking positive and pulling, putting concepts together and exploring the world. And this particular one is called Inward Gaze. She usually writes on his pieces, which is kind of fun, exploring your own self. And some of his work we can call challenging for sure in appearance, but there's such a higher meaning behind his blown forms. And since he has passed away, there are there are works out there to get, but this is probably one of the nicest ones that I could live with and maybe you. So we're back to Valine. This is the other one I thought was absolutely stunning, a map series piece. Another map that's somewhat simple has the boat form talking about traveling through life and exploring um, the world and as an individual. And you can see that the pattern and colors are a little more simple to some of his more elaborate works, but it's one of my favorites. And at 21 inches tall, it is quite substantial. Let's see what we got here. This is Jay Musler's Cityscape Bowl. Let me see what Ferd wrote. Uh, it's an important piece of the artist's signature work uh, with sister works in many museums. It was the cover, an image for Susan Frank's book discussing the Corning Museum's collection. There's one of these here at the Henry Ford Museum in their permanent collection. So these were actually made from huge commercial test tubes that Jay Musser bought. I'm guessing he bought a few of them and then cut and created these beautiful cityscapes. And they're quite beautiful. And if you like this body of work and don't win it at the auction, we have work in our gallery by um, Aiken and uh, Eakin Aiken and Josh Davids, who work in a similar style, but they blow their work and then cut around the side. So it's 
kind of like the next generation of this body of work. And last piece in the auction is Michael Glancy, who, who slowly and methodically created this work in a perfect way. He's never duplicated the work, always considering each piece a new adventure. And since he passed away in 2020, every now and then you get magical pieces on the secondary market. And this is one of those pieces, super historic. Um, it comes with the plexi plate below it. When you see his work, there's three parts in this type of work. There's the vessel, there's the plate, and a plexi piece that goes underneath it to show you replace everything. The plexi is missing, a portion of the piece is missing. So we try to make sure that our pieces have the plexis. So that wraps up the auction. You can DM me with questions or call me anytime. The auction's coming up, but let's talk about the ways of bidding. So the live auctioneers online way is the most expensive, but a lot of people like using live auctioneers. It's 29% premium with their 5% incorporated. They don't mention that, and people have been calling me after the auction. So make sure you read the fine print that is a 5% fee for using their system on top of our Pyre's premium normally. Our, our Masterworks auction sites that we run ourselves at the gallery is 24% if you pay by credit card, but if you pay by check, it can drop down to 20%. So keep that in mind. I advise you to go to our habitat.com, go to the top, click on Masterworks, sign up, bid there, you'll save. The, the least expensive ways, call me. Call me on the phone, place your private bids or your silent bids, and we can take your bids and place them during the auction. We bid up to and stop at your maximum. So it's the same kind of way. Just It's just through us, so there's no other third party other than us and you. So our live bidding takes place on the 24th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. It's in Sarasota. Come see the exhibition. Come see the auction. We still have some room left in our Glass Coast weekend to be part of everything. Contact me anytime. So with that, uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And thank you all for joining me today. This will be shared on YouTube, so feel free to like, subscribe, hit that bell, and share. And make sure that uh, if you have any questions, let me know every time. Be well, everybody. Have a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.